All right, it's been a while since I made a video. I think it's been like two months. Welcome to the vlog, my name is Chris. If you're new here, I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video, so today we're focusing on Luna. So Luna is a budgeting app that I'm creating to help me curb spending, and also it's just a project for me to grow as a developer and designer. So I was actually traveling nonstop for the last two months. I was in Europe, Chicago, Vegas. It was really fun, but I basically lost all sense of routine, so that's why the videos have dropped off. Most of the traveling's done though, so hopefully I'm back on track and can start posting more consistently. Or at least we're gonna try. So even though I haven't been posting a lot, I actually did get a lot done on the budgeting app. We're gonna go through some of these things. As the title probably suggests, um, things are not going according to plan. The original designs I had for the app, they're not really working. They were really good in theory. Now that I'm actually using it every single day, the designs actually aren't that functional. It's not that great. I'll go more into depth here in the video. And then the second thing is building a budgeting app is just way harder than I thought. When I looked at a lot of the budgeting apps, I was like, why are these things so complicated? It doesn't have to be like this. It could be simple. Why do they have all of these features and settings, now I'm starting to understand. Budgeting apps are really complicated. There's a lot of edge cases I didn't think of. Starting to gain a little bit of an appreciation for why some of these apps made the design choices and the technical choices that they probably did, because I'm running into a lot of these problems. I'll go a little bit more in detail in this video. So even though things aren't going that well, the point of the video though is to show that that's completely normal. So I went through the exact same thing with my other app, Ellie, which is a daily planning app. The app doesn't look remotely similar to how it started. There were a lot of designs that looked really good on paper, but then when I actually used it, didn't really work out. So this is a pretty normal thing. If you're building anything from scratch, you're probably gonna run into this too. Two so. months ago, I had like a prototype done in Swift UI. Prototype was clickable. It wasn't hooked up to anything. So all the screens were functioning. You can click them, but it didn't actually do anything. Like if I save a transaction, it wouldn't really save anywhere. It was just a clickable prototype. So that's where we were two months ago. Once I was happy with the prototype, I actually decided to hook it up to a backend. If you saw my previous video about Luna, you know that I was gonna use Superbase for this, for the backend. Well, that didn't end up happening. I actually decided at the last minute to use Firebase. I can make a whole video on why it shows Firebase over Superbase, but for now it was just a decision of speed. This isn't saying Superbase is bad or really slow or anything. I just move a lot faster with Firebase. This is like my fifth project with Firebase, so I know how to get ramped up really quickly. I know the edge cases. My biggest priority at the time was moving this from a prototype to something I can actually use in real life. And so to get to that faster, I decided to just use Firebase for now. I will say that I coded the app in a way where the app is really modular. So I can actually swap that backend provider really easily. So that's the first thing I did was actually hook up the back end of the prototype. It's a fully functioning app now. So once I had the prototype in my hand, I started using it and that's when I immediately started noticing some problems. When I designed the home screen, I had a certain flow in my head of how I was gonna use it. Throughout the day, I have to make a bunch of choices like should I go to this coffee shop or should I just make coffee at home? So what I was hoping was that when I have to make that choice of going to a coffee shop or So what I was hoping was when I had to make that choice of going to a coffee shop or making coffee at home, I can just open up the app and quickly see how much money I had left and figure out, okay, can I actually afford to do this? At a minimum, it would get me to think twice before spending the money. And that's the whole purpose of the app. It's to help me curb spending. That was the flow I had envisioned. But then I realized like that flow didn't really work out. When I opened the app, I saw this screen. I couldn't really remember if that chart on the right-hand side, which looks really good in a screenshot, I couldn't remember if that was how much money I had left or how much money that I spent. I had to take like one or two seconds to remember what the circles actually meant. Even though it says amount left at the top, I still took those one to two seconds to like remember what that right hand side meant. And if I'm feeling that and I'm the one that built it and designed it, I'm pretty sure other people will feel the same way. So that day I showed the screenshot to two people, said, hey, like, what do you think about this design? Both of them said that they had no idea what the circles meant. I didn't prompt them to that. I didn't say anything. They both just said, I have no idea what this means. It looks nice, but I don't know what it means. This is actually showing like how much money you have left. And both of them didn't really like that. I decided, okay, if I'm having trouble with this, they clearly they're having trouble with this. Um, it's probably a common thing. I'm like zero for three. So I decided to actually remove it. So now that's removed from the design, but now that the circle's gone, I don't really know how much money I'd spent. So like I see $100 left in coffee, but like I don't know how big it is relative to the actual budget. Is this $100 out of a thousand? Because that's pretty bad. Or is it $100 out of a $120 budget? Like that's not as bad. That became a quick UX problem like once I made that change. So I studied a bunch of budgeting apps. I use this website called Mobbin to look at screenshots. So what I was looking for was a dashboard or a home screen that would help me answer that question of like, how much money do I have left? Is it a lot? Is it a little? And the two best apps that I found that do this are Copilot and YNAB. So they're both slightly different too, in terms of what they show. So I think YNAB shows how much money is left. Copilot just shows like how much money is spent. But when I really sat with both of them, I realized I liked the YNAB one a little bit more. So I decided to actually take that two column layout and even like the little chips, because it was just so easy to scan and implement it into Luna. Now the app went from this to look 
looking like this. The change might not seem that big, but like this transition from this to this, the original design was just so clean. It was so simple. It was really, it was a really nice screenshot. So it's a little bit more cluttered, but it's a lot more functional. Like it actually answers the questions that I need compared to this design. Might not seem like a pretty big deal, but this is a pretty big change. Completely fine though. So I started using this, uh, this new format for a few days. And as I use the app, I actually realized I never touched this bottom categories page, which spent a lot of time on it. We have this really nice drag and drop I worked on. I opened it one time to create categories and then like never again. My philosophy when it comes to designing apps is if it's something I'm not using and or no one else is using, just cut it. It's not worth taking up tab space because maybe I'll eventually add analytics. I remove this. So now we just have these three buttons on the bottom. But I realized that was the primary way you create categories. So now that that's gone, now we need a button probably on the home screen to create categories. There were two options I was weighing, either a menu when you click the plus button. So I've seen some other apps like Family has a really nice menu that I like where when you click their plus button, you have a bunch of different options. Maybe, so maybe when you click this plus button, it'll give you the option, do you want to create a category or do you want to log a transaction? And then the other option is to have like a button at the bottom that says add category. Here was my thought process when thinking through which one to choose. But the pro of not putting it inside of the plus button, it's very intuitive for new users. A lot of them won't know to click the plus button. Like they won't know that there's an additional menu there. They'll know immediately this is how I add a new category. So very intuitive for new users. The big con though is that it does add more clutter to the interface, especially if you don't add categories that frequently. But the big bigger third pro that I realized is to add a new transaction, it would take two clicks. You have to click the plus button and then click add new transaction. That flow would probably happen multiple times a day. That added friction of two clicks will start adding up over time. I chose to go actually just to add it directly to the home screen. Even though it's adding even more clutter to this already getting cluttered page, I felt like that was the right choice. So now we have the ability to add categories. Another thing on categories, when I was traveling, I had a category for taking the Uber or taking the Metro. But now that I'm not traveling, that category is not relevant anymore. I'm like driving everywhere. I needed a way to delete transactions, but, but not really delete them, just kind of like hide them or archive them. And this was something I didn't consider. And so I looked at what other budgeting apps do and YNAB was a great example. They allow you to hide the categories. And then, and then there's a new hidden category section. I realized like after looking at all the budgeting apps, that's probably the best flow for something like this. Now we added a new hidden category section and the ability to archive a category, added more clutter to the home screen, and also just like added a little bit more complexity to the app. I had to explain the difference between archiving and deleting to users. So I had to make this whole screen and flow for it. More complexity, but this is an edge case I just didn't think of at the beginning. So it just so happened that a week ago I started using the app and it was a brand new month, like which is the beginning of May, and the budget completely rolled over. It's a whole new budget. So I went to a coffee shop, decided to pull out Luna when I was went to go check out to figure out, okay, can I afford to buy this coffee. Like I've already started building up the habit after doing this for a few days. Like I just naturally pulled this thing out. I saw $150 on the screen and I was like, oh, I can more than afford this coffee. I can afford a pastry. I could literally buy whatever I want here. I have $150. I realized something was just wrong with that number. It seemed a little too high, but then I realized, oh, it's because it's the beginning of the month. And at the beginning of the month, you just have this excess of money. And it really gave me a false sense that I had a ton of money to spend, which wasn't true because if I actually spent a lot of the money right now, then I'd be paying for it at the end of the month. In that coffee shop, I realized I accidentally built a budgeting app that would cause me to overspend at the beginning of the month. That's a pretty big problem. So I actually posted about the problem on Twitter. Here's the update on the budgeting app. Honestly, like this is a pretty big problem. I don't know how to solve it. And I got so many helpful solutions. So first, thank you to everyone who commented on this thread. I don't know if I would have gotten to this conclusion. There were a lot of awesome solutions people were proposing in the thread. The solution that I liked the most was to change the app from showing things on a monthly basis to a weekly basis. It's easier to pace yourself if you think about it like that. I rewrote the entire app to be more weekly based rather than monthly based. I have not found many budgeting apps that do that, by the way. I did a bunch of research, YNAB, Copilot, everyone does it monthly and probably a good reason that I'm gonna figure out down the line of why they do that, but I decided to rewrite it as a weekly budgeting app. So now instead of saying I have $150 left for the month, it says you have $30 for the week or something. I did not do the math right on that, but yeah, something like that. If I see I have $150, I feel like, oh, I have a lot of money to spend, but if I see 30, I'll be a little bit more cautious about spending. So this was great. I used it for a few more days. Everything was going really well. But then I realized that there were a couple categories that it just didn't make sense to look at it on a weekly basis. For example, I don't buy gas on a weekly basis. Let's just say I spend $300 in gas. It doesn't make sense for me to split that up into $75 each week. Same thing with groceries. I don't buy groceries every single week. I do it probably twice a month. That one actually makes sense for me to look at it on a month to month basis. My next iteration after this was to actually try a combo of both. And this is something I have not seen any budgeting app do. Um, I, I could not find anyone that does it like this. If you actually have an example, please share it in the comments because I'm curious how they 
do it. Now you can actually choose whether you want a category to be a weekly or a monthly budget. So now I actually group the categories that are weekly at the top and then the monthly ones at the bottom. It, it is a little bit confusing to new users because I did test it by showing some people and they at first didn't get it. But then once I explained it, they like completely understood it. So unfortunately, I can't figure out a better solution than this right now. So um, I might just have to roll with this and then do really good onboarding to explain it or something. But yeah, that's kind of where the app is right now. Two months ago, we started with this design and after a lot of iteration, we're now here, which looks completely different. And yeah, it's a lot more cluttered, but the app is so much more functional and usable for me. Again, the point of the video I wanted to show was that the flow is not working out the way I thought it would, but that's completely fine and that's completely normal. If you're a builder, I think one of the first things you should do is try to get a usable demo in your hand as quickly as possible. You can, so you can actually see how does it feel to use it? Should I change anything? Does the design actually make sense? It's a little painful for me because I really wanted design and simplicity to be at the forefront of this. So it's really hard for me to go from this original thing to this definitely more cluttered design. I feel a lot more confident in the solution and I feel like it's actually solving my actual problem. I didn't even touch on the technicals that went into this. I had to change the data structure a bunch. I had to change the way that the app handles budgets. This was actually very complicated on the technical end anytime I made some of these changes. I have a massive appreciation for budgeting apps. Like there's a lot of edge cases to solve. There's just a lot of things I didn't think through when I took this on. And I'm just building this for me. So if I had to build it for a lot of other people in mind or a lot of different use cases, that's really tough. So if you're building a budgeting app, props to you. This is really difficult. <laughs> this is actually pretty hard. Hopefully this gives you guys some insight on what the iteration process looks like for me early on. If you like this kind of content, also check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity app. Obviously, if you like this kind of content, subscribe. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.